This is the Breville Bambino. It's an espresso machine that costs just $350, which is relatively low in the world of espresso machines. And I'm gonna say it, this just very well might be the best espresso machine for beginners on a budget. Sure, on this channel, I've talked about some of the big stuff, machines like the Rocket Departamento, Lee Bianca, Profitech Pros, machines that retail anywhere from $1,500 and all the way up to $3,000. But this machine has been a pleasant surprise for sure. And honestly, it's probably something that I should have considered a little bit more in hindsight way back when I decided to purchase my first espresso machine, which was the Gadget Classic Pro. In fact, I'm inclined to suggest this machine for a lot of people who are looking to dip their toes into the realm of espresso without breaking the bank. Now for some disclaimers, I did in fact purchase this machine by myself for the full retail price of $350, and this video is not associated with Breville in any way. This video does have a sponsor, which is Cliff and Pebble, but more on them later. This channel is supported by my channel members and those that use my affiliate links in the description down below, which is of course where you can find all the gear I use as well as any links to machines and products featured in this video. Okay, so let's carry on with the review and get started talking about the build quality of the Breville Bambino. This build is what I would call utilitarian or maybe functional. It provides everything you need and nothing more or less. The body's thin, it's lightweight, stainless steel, and has mostly plastic features all around. Now again, I do have to reiterate that this machine is just $350, so I'm not expecting these super thick, bent, chrome, thick stainless steel panels here. In the box, you do get a few accessories, including different baskets, single and dual shot sizes, as well as pressurized and non-pressurized. You also get descaling powder and a milk pitcher. This machine is extremely lightweight and very, very tiny at just about six inches wide, 14 inches deep, and about a foot tall. The water reservoir here has a 47 ounce capacity, but the drip tray is quite tiny and you will very likely need to frequently empty it. Um, it does have a little red plastic piece here that will float to indicate when it needs to be emptied. I do like that unlike a lot of prosumer level machines, the water tank is visible. So this makes it really easy to know when it needs a refill prior to pulling a shot. And luckily, again, unlike a lot of prosumer machines, it doesn't need a long wait time to get hot. Now, I have no idea what kind of black magic Breville is implementing here, but water gets to brewing temperature in literally seconds. But more on that part later. The buttons in the front here are okay. Nothing particularly good nor bad about them. I do feel like there could have been a dedicated on-off switch, but instead you have to simply press the brew buttons in certain combinations to turn them on and then press it again to turn it off. Not a huge deal. The Steam One is not insulated and it will burn you. I kind of made that mistake after being used to machines I own that have a no burn feature, but there is a little rubber piece here that you can hold onto attached to the Steam Wand. However, one little gripe is that there's not a ton of room here for maneuvering the Steam Wand. I've had best results using my smallest 10 ounce pitcher. So the stock portafilter that comes with this machine is probably my least favorite part of the build. It's incredibly lightweight and it just feels like cheap aluminum. It's made cheaply, but it is functional. It's just not very pretty nor inspiring to use. Same also goes for the little plastic tamper that was included with this machine, but then again, 350 bucks for the entire thing. So the bill itself is functional. Nothing particularly stands out quality wise, but nothing screams poor quality either. Well, except maybe this portafilter. But the machine being so lightweight does mean that you will need to hold it down whenever you are locking in or uh, unlocking your portafilter, otherwise it will cause the machine to shift. So just pressing a hand on top does help to solve this. And no, the top does not get hot either. Okay, so with the build quality aside, what's it actually like to use this machine? What are my thoughts coming from using $3,000 machines on the daily? And it's surprisingly good, especially as a beginner, and honestly something that, again, I really, really wish I considered more back when I had a Gadget Classic Pro. The workflow is pretty identical to any other semi-automatic espresso machine without a built-in grinder. You'll still dose, grind, tamp, and weigh everything in between. Only difference being is that everything's just a little bit smaller. And that is where Crema Coffee Products comes in with a great lineup of Breville-focused accessories that they graciously sent over. This includes a very nice wooden bottomless portafilter, dosing cup, tamper, and funnel. So once your puck is prepped, you can simply lock it in and press a button. Now here, I've generally stuck to using the dual shot button because I use the dual shot baskets exclusively. And where it gets interesting is in the fact that you can either let the shot complete on its own, and the single shot dispenses about 30 mils and the dual shot closer to 60. Of course, in the cup, it's a little bit less. But the interesting bit here is that you can program it yourself by holding down either button for three seconds to start the shot and then pressing it again to end the shot. The machine will then learn and save this timing for future use. So effectively, it's a really good way of keeping your dialed in shot 
dialed in without having to really manually watch for it. It's actually a pretty nice feature that I personally would have liked as a beginner. Now, interestingly enough, you also can do a sort of mock pre-infusion on this machine by holding down either button to dispense just a little bit of water and then releasing the button to continue with the extraction. Now for me, I've generally had best results using 16 gram doses with the baskets I've been using, as well as a puck screen, which by the way, I will be working on stocking some 54 millimeter Mocha Mondays puck screens real soon. Now, before moving on to the rest of the review, here's a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, Cliff and Pebble. If you're in the market for your next espresso machine, grinder, or coffee accessory, be sure to check out Cliff and Pebble. The Chicago-based team has all of your favorite brands, including Rocket, Lilith, Eureka, Baratza, and more, and they provide excellent pre- and post-purchase customer service, and you can be rest assured knowing that they'll help you out with all of your coffee brewing endeavors. Be sure to visit them using the link in the description down below, and once again, thanks to Cliff and Pebble for sponsoring this video. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about steaming. Now, in terms of the steaming, this machine acts very similarly to any other single boiler like the Gajet Classic, where once your shot is done, you then need to hit a separate button to get steam going. You will need to do a decent amount of purging, which the wand does nicely aim directly into the drip tray holes to dispense a little bit of that water before getting to the drier steam. But I've noticed that if the drip tray is full of water, it can get a little bit messy, so just be aware of that. So once you purge it, you can then steam your milk. And of course, it will take a little bit longer than some of the prosumer machines over have over here, but I've been able to get perfectly silky milk just fine. I've generally done about maybe five seconds or so of aeration at the start, and then I push in a little bit deeper to get that whirlpool going, and generally found that this process takes maybe roughly 30 seconds. It's relatively easy to pick up as a beginner, and because you've got a little bit more wiggle room in terms of timing, it's gonna be a lot more beginner friendly compared to something like a prosumer machine's steam wand. And you'll also be able to learn how to steam milk properly with this machine with just a little bit of practice. Just check out some of the pours I've been able to do with this machine. Now, once again, to reiterate, the steam wand is not insulated, so it is hot. Um, so you will want to use the little rubber grip. I wish it did have just a little bit of more maneuverability for larger pitchers, but given the size of the machine and the workflow, I'd expect you to be making one, maybe two drinks at most at a time, so a smaller pitcher works just fine. Cleaning the wand immediately after steaming is a little bit tough because it's not insulated and because the milk dries onto the wand very, very quickly. I found the best way to clean this without burning yourself is using this little steam wand cleaning tool that I picked up, which I'll leave a link to in the description as well. All right, so now let's talk about the espresso. The shots I've been getting from this machine have been surprisingly good and reasonably consistent. I've definitely had better results using something on the maybe light medium to medium roast side, maybe even a little bit darker than using something that's very light. When pulling for lighter roasts, I've gone with a one to two and a half or sometimes even a one to three ratio in about a 30 to 35, maybe even up to 40 second range. And for beginners, that just means that I'm dosing about 16 grams in and getting two and a half, three, three times that weight out in espresso, AKA 40 to 48 grams ish out with a 30 to 35 second time. I am also typically starting time when I hit the button, which is why I'm at that 30 to 35 second shot versus a more typical 25 to 30 because there are a few seconds delay at the start from when you first push the button. The espresso quality is good. It has a nice little layer of crema, the texture is nice with a rich body and the mouthfeel is smooth. On lighter roasts, I found a little bit more acidity coming through the shots than I'd personally like, but apart from that, it makes perfectly capable espresso. Now in this budget, a nice premium hand grinder might be a great pairing with this machine. Now, granted, I have been using a $1,400 Akaya Orbit in testing, uh, but you should be able to get plenty of great results with a more budget grinder. Again, you just wanna be sure you're using good water, good freshly roasted coffee, and you have a good grinder. And then you'll be pulling shots comparable or better to your local coffee shop. Now, I've had surprisingly good consistency with this machine. Back-to-back -back shots have been very good, and I've been able to use that pre-programmable shot volume feature to get more repeatable shots without really having to monitor everything all the time. And every day, every other day or so, this just needs a little bit of tweaking and dialing in, but generally you'll have a good time with this machine. Now, like any other machine, this one will also require a little bit of cleaning on the regular. To do this is quite simple though, they guide you through it in the manual, but you literally just fill the tank up with water and a descaling solution, and then you press a combination of buttons to get it going. Very easy. Now, before I share with you my final thoughts on the Breville Bambino, here's a quick reminder to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already, as it really does help support the channel. And also feel free to leave a comment about this machine, whether it's something you like, don't like, or maybe a question you want answered. This machine is very, very capable for just $350. It's definitely going to scratch that itch for those of you wanting that sort of home barista experience and get great tasting espresso or lattes at home. 
For a beginner, it's super intuitive and easy to use, and it's a lot less intimidating than some more prosumer level machines, and has the perks of a larger company behind it, meaning you do get some better direct customer support, replacement pieces, and a lot of community help. But obviously, it's not perfect. The machine has some little quirks here and there, like the steam wand being difficult to clean and maneuver, the drip tray just being way too small, and the machine generally just moving around a ton whenever you're locking in or removing a portafilter. This machine is not going to be for everyone, and if you're looking to make several drinks back to back in a short time frame, then you're probably going to want to look at a more expensive machine or something in a more prosumer level. Additionally, if you're mostly a straight espresso drinker, you might want a machine that could offer more capabilities like flow control or PID temperature control. But for the average home user, maybe for those that want better quality commodity coffee, and for someone who wants a machine that they could almost just set it and forget it, that would provide great quality with a little practice, then this is hard to beat, especially at its just $350 price point. So as always, you can find links to this in the description down below, as well as anything else I've mentioned in this video. As always, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. And that is where Crema Coffee...